there's two possible reasons you've clicked on this video. You've either become obsessed with this story about a family of Australian dogs and you desperately want to talk about it, but you're too afraid to admit to your friends you're in love with the children's show, or you're trying to understand why this little blue dog has been interrupting your family guy clips on TikTok. I found myself in the second category about two weeks ago. At first, I wondered why TikTok was recommending me a show that was so clearly for kids. From a glance, the bright color palette, silly energetic music, and anthropomorphic dog seemed like a clear indication of the show's target audience. The first clips I saw were short and out of context. Uh, a little joke for the parents. Nice work, Bluey. Dad. Yeah? How does the baby get in the lady's belly? Oh. A silly gag. Nothing too crazy. It just seemed like a decent kid's show. But the clips kept coming, and they slowly got longer, and I started noticing some things that didn't seem to fit the traditional mold of a children's show. Hold on, wait, wait, wait. This chick desperately wants kids, but can't have any? This dad just reached for his wife's hand when their kids pretend pregnancy suddenly ends? Did these kids just become friends and we see a mini montage of them growing up together? Is this show deep? Is my apparent interest in this Disney junior looking ass cartoon a consequence of my underdeveloped frontal lobe? I was getting curious and it was the middle of finals week so deciding I had nothing better to do, I decided to see what the show had to offer outside the realm of TikTok snippets. And I've watched the entire series. The best way I can describe Bluey to you is it's a slice of life focused on family life with preschool and primary aged school children that's made for adults, particularly parents, but can also be watched and enjoyed by children. Regardless of the show's true target audience, it does a masterful job creating scenarios where children can be entertained, adults can connect with extremely relatable parental experiences, and depressed teenagers can see what a real loving family looks like. All jokes aside, this show captivated me after only a few episodes, and I watched the entire thing with a giddy smile on my face. If you enjoy anything wholesome and you're prepared to tear up a few times, this show is going to be for you. Now, because I'm too much of a bitch to tell any of my friends about Bluey, I'm going to explain to you why it so quickly earned a special place in my and so many other people's hearts. Bluey doesn't really have a central plot like most shows that people would consider good. Individual episodes don't advance any overarching narrative. Each episode is seven minutes long and serves the viewer its own little story. Typically, the plot involves the kids learning some kind of lesson. No shit, right? It's a children's show. Here's the thing, though. Instead of talking down to the viewer and treating them like a little kid like so many other shows of this nature do... Hey, there's Piggy. He stopped in the middle of the race. Maybe he needs help. Bluey takes a more nuanced approach regarding the situations the characters find themselves in. For example, portraying what a kid or adult feels like when they're going through something, or what a good parent can or should do in a particular situation. A great example of this is in Season 1, Episode 24, Wagon Ride. Bluey's getting annoyed that her dad is taking too long talking to friends. Bluey's dad, Bandit, who I'm going to talk about later, he's the goat, then shows Bluey how to get a hold of him when he's talking with another adult instead of interrupting. Okay, how about this? If I'm talking to a grown-up and you want me, you just come up and put your hand on my arm. So now I know that you want to talk to me. Then I'll do this to show you that I know you're there and that you want to talk to me. What do you think? Yeah! All right! High five! Ah, I got something in my eye. <laughs> Now, I love this scene because I was that impatient kid interrupting my mom to tell her that I wanted to leave. My mom would get really upset with me for being a little shit, and rightfully so. But we never ended up solving that clash. Now this cartoon dog comes up with a 500 IQ solution in two seconds. This show has me frantically taking parenting notes as a 19-year-old with no girlfriend, let alone children. Real parents and kids can genuinely learn things from the way the characters in this show communicate and interact with one another. Now, I'm not a parent, so this is definitely bro science, but I'm pretty sure this show is basically just a parenting handbook. Anyways, let's get on to the meat and potatoes of the show, the characters. The characters in Bluey are absolutely fantastic. They're entertaining, relatable, adorable, and best of all, realistic. First off, we have the main character and the namesake of the show, Bluey, a now seven-year-old blue healer, who is a girl, I didn't realize it first either. Her younger sister, Bingo, her mom, Chili, and dad, Bandit. The show also hosts a plethora of side characters that often pop up, each designed after a different dog breed. When you use anthropomorphic animals in your storytelling, you can go one of two ways. 
make the fact that they're animals integral to the story like Zootopia, or make them animals because fun and interesting character design like they would do in Sing. Bluey definitely falls into the second category. Aside from the yeah, occasional joke or minor plot point referencing their doghood, like the border collie jumping on sheep's backs, It's too far! Come on, Bluey! It's just like jumping from one sheep to another. We don't jump on sheep, Mackenzie. Really? The fact that their dogs takes a backseat. I mean, holy cow, these characters feel like they're real people. Bluey and Bingo are such realistic kids. They complain, can be really annoying sometimes, and they can be selfish. But they also feel remorse and empathy when they're a pain, and they can be really sweet. They're really good kids. Their laughs and voices sound so genuine and real. So tell me, is this rough okay? Boing. Yes, that's okay. Okay, how about this rough? Boing. Yes, that's okay. This is because they actually have little kids voicing the characters and not adults pretending to be kids. It's actually unknown who's doing Bluey and all their friends' voices to protect their identities. But god damn, these kids are some phenomenal voice actors. Usually kids make pretty lackluster voice actors, but in Bluey, I swear to god, they just mic'd up some kids and let them do their thing. Kind of like those NBA mic'd up videos. Come on, man. That's so easy. And don't even get me started on the parents, my they're so awesome. But Bandit, oh! He's actually the best character ever conceived by mankind. This is an objective fact. It's so refreshing to see a dad that's not a complete moronic buffoon like every other animated dad on TV. Instead of moments of brilliance sprinkled sparsely throughout an ocean of failure, we see the opposite. He's a model parent. He goes along with all his kids' games, putting his heart and soul into it. And even when he's not feeling it, he's there for his kids when they need him. And we see him honest to goodness trying his best to raise his kids right. But he also makes mistakes. For example, insinuating he'd rather have two bingos instead of a bluey, not letting bluey win a race they were having, and telling bingo off when he was on a work call. Now wait a second, you're thinking, this doesn't sound very nice to me. And you're right. But when Bandit makes a mistake, he recognizes it and will genuinely apologize and try and make it up to his kids. You're my hero, bingo. <laughs> if I've ever hurt your feelings, I'm really sorry, mate. Must feel really bad when your dad does that. Just know that I love you, kid, and I'd do anything for you. I, 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 he's about as close to perfect as a real person can be, which is what makes him such a great role model. Watching Band and Parent is like watching bodybuilders lift weights. Man, I want to be like that. And I think I could get there with discipline if I really tried. I want to give kids that life someday. If I can act as that figure in someone else's life, then it would be a shame if I let that opportunity go to waste. Analogy falls apart at the end of the bit, but you get the idea. Oh yeah, and Chili's there too, I guess. I mean, she's she's cool. I mean, she she plays with the kids too. She gives them pretty good advice. She's pretty similar to Bandit, all things considered. Bandit's still the, the best though, don't at me. These characters are all great on their own, but what really sells them to me is their interactions and the scenarios they find themselves in. While watching this show, I can almost guarantee that you will see a game the characters are playing or something that the parents or kids do that'll make you go, Oh shit, I did that as a kid. Or, Oh, my kids do that now. I'm watching this show going, I played Army when I was a kid. My dad always hated getting stuck behind slow drivers on a road trip. I remember having big group birthday parties with a bunch of families. Bluey uses these relatable and seemingly trivial experiences to really ground the show in reality and make the world and characters come alive. Watching Bluey just feels like you're watching a real-life family just live their day-to-day -day life. Now, of course you're not going to relate to everything in the show. For example, Bluey and Bingo's parents actually love each other. But seriously, I'm so tired of seeing every married couple on TV and in movies having a dead or, like, extremely rocky marriage. Seeing such a sweet relationship between husband and wife and their children is a fucking inspiration. And the show doesn't force it either. Most of the time we just see the two meandering around as usual, but every once in a while we see that they really still care about each other. This show is too wholesome, I'm telling you, bro. Ooh. Speaking of wholesome, Bluey and Bingo are like the cutest kids you've ever seen. This show reminds you of why people have kids, they're freaking adorable. But it isn't all sunshine and rainbows either. Right after showing you the most wholesome clip of all time, they hit you with a gut puncher, reminding you of the realities of life that we all must face. Impulse control, dealing with a bully, saying goodbye to someone, motherhood, growing up and leaving home, infertility, and even death. 
These kids aren't the only characters that face issues in this show, and that's what gives it such a universal appeal. Many of the themes tackled struck a personal chord with me and have done so in countless others. I've seen enough TikTok videos of parents bawling over Bluey while their kid absentmindedly watches alongside them to know this show is more than its initial impression. Bluey is elevated to an even greater height through its incredible soundtrack. Now if you're not really a music nerd like me, you might not care about this too much, but stick with me here for a bit. The soundtrack balances the perfect amount of whimsical fun with quiet and tranquil set-piece songs. with huge orchestral compositions. Hey, oh my goodness. I can't take it anymore. The soundtrack is so dynamic and the music fits together with the visuals like puzzle pieces. One episode you have classical music, another it's acapella, another it's jazz, next it's synthesized, next you got guitar shredding. <coughs> Yet somehow it still maintains its identity and doesn't seem weird or mismatched. It's really amazing how they were able to accomplish this. It does a fantastic job setting the mood, whether the kids are playing a silly game or dad is about to leave for six weeks. And the best part is out of nowhere, what seems like a mellow track can just soar and elevate scenes to the next level. This show is absolutely incredible and you owe it to yourself to watch it. It's a beautiful look in a family life and it really makes you think about what you have and to never take anything for granted. I was originally going to end this video with a straight up minute and a half long clip from one of the best episodes, Camping, but YouTube had other plans so fuck me I guess. I hope you all enjoyed the video. Hey, thank you all so much for watching this video all the way through. I've always wanted to make a video essay and I finally got the inspiration to do so. I hope you enjoyed it. Now have a good one and let me know if you'd like to see more.